Hello, my bead rolling friends. How are you tonight? Well, I was telling you that I would go ahead and do another live tonight because I missed you all so much while I was on vacation. So here I am and I have a ton of glazing to do. I have a ton of small beads you'll see in a minute that we need to glaze. And so I thought, let's do that and I'll try out maybe a few different glazes that I have around just to see if we can see any difference in them while I'm working on it. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. So I'm so glad that you're gonna join me. Please pop a comment in the chat so that I know you're here. And, um, and let's get started, all right? Okay, so let me switch over. These are the beads that I have tonight to glaze. There are tons of them. They're for a special project. They're actually going to be a um, collaboration with Seamstress, but I won't tell you exactly what I'm going to make with them. And we already put them on the toothpicks. My mom helped me with this while I was on vacation. These actually traveled back this way from Ohio. And I also have, in addition to my beads and toothpicks, I have blocks. You just won't be able to see them because I wanted to get close enough. Hey Bev, Debbie, Kathleen, hi guys. We got Ohio, we got Florida, Linda, hi. We got people from all over the place coming today. That's awesome. Another Ohioan. Love it. Love it. Home state. You guys are about to get hot up there. I heard like 110 degrees. Um, soon. Stay cool. Stay inside in the air conditioning if you can. Because you are not used to that for sure. All right, we've got our tray here that we're going to use to put our glazes in. I got enough uh, different sections. And I've got some water and a tiny little pointed brush because these guys are pretty tiny. Australia! Kathleen, I think you win the distance, maybe, unless somebody else comes on. I think you're the furthest so far. Sometimes we get a couple UKers. Kathy's in Indiana. I was I just drove through Indiana on my way to Michigan. It's nice. It was beautiful. There's some wind farms up there that I think I think they were in Indiana or they might have been across the border, but wow. It was right kind of where all the states meet. Those things are huge. Huge. Yes, is it humid, Linda? Ugh, it's humid in North Carolina, I'll tell you what. You walk outside and you feel like you're in a sauna. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Hey, we got Debbie Ryder, we got Joni, and she's in Nebraska. I've never been to Nebraska. Let's see. So I think we'll put these, maybe we'll put these off camera so that they don't get in our way. Ooh, they're on beads. So we're gonna brush glaze tonight, you guys. I got tons of these to do. It's more fun with company. So we can hang out and chat and compare some different glazes. So here's the three that I have. You tell me which one I should start with. So I've got my old standby diamond glaze, which you know that's what I like the most. Winnipeg, oh, nice. Boy, we're, we're, we got people from all over the place. We've got some triple thick from Deco Art. And then we have one I actually have not tried yet, but somebody mentioned this to me. I don't know if it was in a, on Facebook or in a comment on YouTube, but somebody wanted me to try this Mod Podge Dimensional Magic on paper beads and see how it goes. So these are the three we're gonna try tonight. So you guys tell me, which should I try first? Do you have a favorite or one you haven't tried? Which one would, which one would you like? First person to, that I see to answer. Your comments sometimes come up in different orders then I see them, but the first one to name one will go with that. Diamond glaze. Tiger Lily says diamond glaze. Ah. And we got all three named, but diamond glaze was first on mine, so we'll go with that first. That's okay. We'll have time to do them all. No worries. All right. So this is the one that tends to be my standby. It's Judy Kinn's Diamond Glaze. It was the maybe the third glaze that I tried when I first started paper beading, and it was the first one that really worked for me. So that may be part of why I stick with it. I'm a little bit um, biased. 
and we'll try um, let's see what was next triple thick was the second one so we'll try that next so here we go so these are little cones and these were made with two different sizes of strips you can see like these pink ones are smaller than the white and they were um, I might have to grab my ruler let's grab my ruler and make sure I get this right I think these the pink ones are let's measure yeah the pink ones are a quarter inch and I believe the larger ones were five eighths inch wide and then they were about six inches long so the Mod Podge leaves them tacky see I don't know and I don't, there's so many different types of Mod Podge too. Like, is there a, like, is this Dimensional Magic what you've used, or is there a different kind of Mod Podge that you use? Because when I was looking at them at the store, there were tons, and this was the one that the person asked me to try for them to test out in my glazing series. So that's the one I got. But I don't use Mod Podge. I know some people will use Mod Podge prior to glaze because they feel like it makes the color brighter. But that's something we can check out tonight and see if that happens for us. We use it on, I have some dark purple ones. The Super Gloss. Who makes the Super Gloss? That's, oh, that's the Mod Podge Super Gloss. Gotcha. I wonder how different they all are. So I'm really just spinning my toothpick here and doing these. Um, let's do some dark ones so we can see how the Judikins does on it. I usually do two to three coats. It depends on how how smooth I want my beads. I tend to like the, the lines to show, the ridges to show a little bit, just because, I don't know, just because then it's more obvious that they are paper. And I think people, when they see it and you tell them it's paper and they see the ridges, that sort of is like a thrill, I don't know. That's probably why I leave them on there. But there have been times when I've done four or five coats of gloss just to try to smooth out and get that glassy look. Tiger Lily is glazing beads as well, so we're doing it together, girl, all right. That's how it should be, right? Tiger Lily, what are you using to glaze yours? Are you brushing or dipping? And what are you using? Share with us. Yep, the B. Dixon. And I should know your first name, and I can't think of it. I'm so sorry. I know we've talked before. So you've been dipping them in PC Petrifier and then two coats of polycrylic. The polycrylic does well, and I actually have, speaking of Petrifier and polycrylic, I was going to save this till the end, but since you brought it up, so I actually do have some in my, I'm experimenting with dipping this right here. These were done with, um, let me uh, bring them up closer. These were done with PC Petrifier and Polycrylic. I dipped, which is not my normal way of doing things. Come on, I'll try and get this to, trying to get the camera to focus for you. Oh, it's not going to do it tonight. This camera is rather temperamental. There we go. So these were in um, two dips in PC Petrifier and a dip of polycrylic. And you can see they kind of, you can really see the polycrylic. You can tell they're coated. And in fact, I see a couple I need to like probably um, file a little bit. I think these were hard. This was my first time dipping. And because these were cones, they were really sticking together because they were, you know, they go inside each other. So I'm not sure this was the best dipping experiment, but... I tried it. I'm going to try it with some um, regular beads as well. Hey, Mary. So Mary says the nail polish can be problematic. I have heard other people say nail polish too, and I've never tried it. So it cracks. Well, I mean, it comes off your nails so easy, but then I guess your nails get used quite a lot more. I haven't had the diamond glaze come off of any jewelry that I've made in, well, it's, gosh, I guess it's almost been, it's been four years now, right? Since I've been doing paper beads. I'm used to saying three years, but I think we're on to four. Um, 
I've never had this come off. Now I have had, when I glazed with um, embossing powder, I did have that crack. Linda uses glossy accent, very shiny. Okay, these are good tips. I may have to add these. I need to finish up my glaze series. I've been working on it for months now and uh, I need to finish it up so we can do the final experiments and see how things held up compared to each other. There's just so many glazes to try. Debbie, you said you don't dip the beads. I don't, generally I brush. Or are you saying you don't dip them in the Mod Podge? That was kind of, I missed it. It was early, that was an earlier comment. So I might have missed what we were talking about when you made that comment. So it was, if, I don't know if you guys, anybody who was on the live or watched the, the replay of the live that I did on Monday, there was an interesting, um, section of the conversation about 110 cardstock and I had a couple thoughts on that I wanted to give you guys um, so a couple people were saying that they had some trouble because I used 110 cardstock in the last tutorial last week's tutorial with the LeBlac um, bead pendant and some people were saying that when they try to use 110 cardstock that it breaks um, and it doesn't roll round like it kind of breaks or it bends instead of rolling and so we played with it a little bit and I was telling everybody I used the recollections brand from Walmart but it or not Walmart Michaels but it occurred to me um, afterwards when I was thinking about it that I have had that happen to me with the heavier cardstock but here is the situation that I've had with that um, I've had it happen when I'm using laminated cardstock. So laminated cardstock would be the kind of cardstock that has the white in the middle and then it has the color like pressed or laminated onto the outsides so that you know the edges of your beads are white. So whenever I use that kind of cardstock, yes, I absolutely get that cracking and it doesn't roll well. So I'm wondering if that could be part of the difference if you were using a laminated cardstock. Because I actually, that's why, I, well, there's two reasons I quit using it completely. Because, you know, they have, like, really cheap laminated cardstock you can get. And they're in very pretty colors and patterns. The problem being the edges are white, so you have to color them. Which, you know, I use um, metallic inks usually to do that. But still, it's kind of adds a step and is kind of a pain. And then... Um, yeah, the cracking, the cracking piece. All right, so we've done, let's see here. We've done six in the diamond glaze. So now we're going to switch on to the second one that was requested, which is, whoops, which is the, I just dropped my brush off camera, which is the triple thick. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out real well. This is my wonderful jar, water jar. Is it better to brush, Debbie asks. You know, that is like a hot topic. Like everybody, there's people who feel incredibly passionately about the brush versus dip. Um, I am, I am a brusher and, but it's more about how I work, I think. Okay, so here's the triple thick. We're gonna put this in my tray. By the way, I have these trays on the website for 99 cents if you guys need any. Um, see, and I don't know, I guess you can't see it because the bottle's in the way, but this is so much thicker. Even when it comes out of the bottle, you can see how much thicker this is than diamond glaze. Is that good or bad? I don't know. We'll find out when I do my final test of my glaze series, but it is definitely thicker. That is a fact. Um, so there, so there is a huge, um, debate on brush and dip. And so the reason that I brush is because I tend to do smaller amounts of beads with this being a, a serious exception. And I also am moving pretty quickly. Like I don't have days to let my beads dip and dry. I need them within, you know, a couple hours of after I roll them. I like, I'm doing tutorials and stuff and I'm moving really fast because I don't have a lot of time. 
So that's why brushing works better for me because it, it's just a very, it's very fast. Now, if you're doing loads of beads like this, yeah, not so fast. Like this is probably gonna take me a couple hours to brush all of these. Um, I think I can do 50, I think I did 50 in 45 minutes maybe while I was on vacation, I think I counted. And those were tiny beads, so those took, those are smaller. They take a little longer than the big beads because you have to be more careful. But, um, so if I were doing tons of beads, I may be more likely to dip. Also, and we talked about this Monday night too a little bit, and I got some opinions um, from folks who dip. I don't think there's any real time difference. Like I think that people who dip think that brushing takes longer, and I think people who brush think dipping takes longer, but I really suspect that they're pretty much the same because if you're dipping, it takes, um, if you're dipping, it takes, it can take days because you dip, you know, so maybe you spend 10 minutes dipping and you leave it hang and then you come back and you dip them again. You dip them three to six times. It also takes a while to string, which is the same amount of time it takes to put them on toothpicks. So, you know, I think it's just a matter of, do you want to do it all at once or do you want to spread it out over a few days? That's my opinion so far, but I, I may change that opinion as I get more into dipping. I'm trying to give it a really fair chance even though it's not what I do now um, Mary mentioned Janice May Janice is awesome we love Janice May she has been doing paper beads forever exactly I think she has YouTube videos going back like 11 years can you believe that um, but yes she does vibrancy um, which I have not used and I need to I need to order some because I've heard good things about it so that is on my plan. All right, I don't know. We'll compare these in a minute. So this is the third one with the triple thick. And I'm out of this in the store right now. This bottle right here is the only bottle I have, but I did, I do have one bottle of diamond glaze left if anybody needs one. I have had trouble getting it from my supplier, so I probably shouldn't sell the last bottle, <laughs> but it's up there. Oh, they're hanging in your basement where the kids and the dogs can't get them. See? Yeah. That is, I have actually had cats try to step over my drying beads before. That is not a good thing. <laughs> Little cat hair in your bead? No. No, thank you. My pod doesn't recommend it either. Yeah, Mary, I, I think, and someone mentioned it earlier, um, that it gets sticky in hot weather. So I know there's a few people who have told me that they use it underneath their glaze, so the glaze over it, which I guess would solve that problem, but they feel like it makes the beads a little more vibrant. So that'll be interesting to see here in a minute. This is the fourth stick, so I'm going to do um, a couple more sticks with this, and then we'll switch to the Mod Podge, and we'll compare vibrancy and how this first coat looks with these three. I may have to do these cones after they, the inside of the cones after I pull them off the sticks. Tire Lily wallpaper. You know, somebody mentioned that and I went, they said that they get the samples from the hardware store, but I went to like my local, like Lowe's and they don't carry wallpaper anymore. Can you believe that? I was all up for getting some wallpaper samples and they were like, no, you can order it online. I'm like, yeah, not what I was, not what I was intending. <laughs> oh, well. I need to go look at some thrift shops for some old wallpaper books or something. Wax paper. <laughs> where do you get where do you get your wallpaper? Like if they don't have it at places like Lowe's, where's is there any good places to get cheap wallpaper to make into beads? Do you buy it or do you like get the samples? Where, where's what's your source? Share your source with us. Wax paper, that's hilarious. All right, 
So I'm going kind of slow here. I kind of, I tend to go fast. I almost did the wrong thing. I tend to go faster when I'm on my own, but I'm nervous on camera. No, I don't know what it is. All right, we're going to switch. So let me rinse out real good. Hey, Michaela. So we're, tr we're actually testing out three things right here. We're, we're, we just tried diamond glaze. Then we did some triple thick, and now we're gonna do Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna show you some comparisons. And we may do second coats of each of those as well after we look at them. So we're about to start the third one right now, which is Mod Podge. All right, so this is, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the microphone. Okay, so this is Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. And again, I chose this one because somebody specifically asked me to test it out for them on camera. Oh, wow, that is thick like the triple thick is. Maybe not as thick. I think it's sort of in between, maybe, the diamond glaze and the Mod Pod, or the diamond glaze and the um, triple thick in terms of thickness. I feel like it's like sort of an in between thickness. That is not a scientific judgment. <laughs> All right, so first time, it's going on nice and smooth. Almost smoother, I feel like, than other ones. Now, usually when I brush, the first coat is harder to put on than the second coat. It sticks a little, like there's a little bit of friction. Have you guys noticed that friction against your brush? I am actually not feeling that with this. I was feeling it with the other two that I just did, but not with this so much. Interesting. This is going on much smoother. Got a few bubbles in there. Almost, actually because of that, I put on too much. I actually had too much on my brush because I wasn't expecting it to go on so smooth. So let's try to clear that off a little. You guys are twinsies the same name. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do six of these and then we're gonna take a look at what the first coat looks like and then maybe we'll do a second coat just to see because sometimes the second coat is where you start seeing differences. Um, somebody asked about embossing powder earlier. I think I missed it, Linda did. So yes, I have tried embossing powder and actually there I have a video on it on my channel. I think there's actually two videos with embossing powder on there. Um, but in the one we, I just did clear and that was a very early video. So it wasn't, wasn't as good <laughs> when I was first learning YouTube. And then I did one not too long ago where I did clear and I did all kinds of different colored embossing powders. Um, some sparkly, some metallics. Um, those were really neat. So check my channel for that video. Embossing powder is, is neat. It's hard to do on, um, on a large scale though, I feel like. But it's great for specialty beads. All right, so this is the Mod Podge. And we'll see how sticky. I'll have to do a test tomorrow, like take these out in the humidity because it is really high humidity and see if they get sticky. So I will do that tomorrow and I will post the result on Facebook. So if you haven't gone and liked my Facebook page, you may wanna do that. I don't post a ton on there. I just really, I kinda of post tutorials or when there's a sale or you know when I have classes locally here. I post that kind of stuff on Facebook. Oh, but I started a new Facebook group, you guys. So I've been thinking about this for a while. There's a couple good Facebook groups on um, on paper beads, but I it was interesting Monday night after I got off the live, I was like, I wish I had a way, like I wanted to tell you guys about my thoughts on the 110 paper, but then I didn't have any really good way. I didn't want to send another email because nobody likes to get a ton of junk email. I had no way to like tell you about those thoughts. So I thought, well, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to have a Facebook group. So I started a paper bead Facebook group and I put the link down in the description. I almost forgot about it, but I put the link down in the description here of the live and I also posted it on my um, Facebook page 
for my business. And then I will send out an email. I meant to throw it in the email I sent earlier about this live and I forgot to put it in there because I was in a hurry to get that out to you. So if you want, come join my Facebook group. It's called Paper Bead Fanatics. And if you go to the Paper Bead Rollers Facebook page, there's a link there for it, or there's a link in the description of this video. And we can chat about stuff in there even when we're not on a live. That'll be fun. And you can post tutorials. I don't, I'm, I'm, I think it would be great to share tutorials. So if you're somebody who does tutorials or has a YouTube channel, you are completely welcome to come into my Facebook group and post your tutorials. I would encourage it and we would love to see what you do because I am really big on sharing and um, supporting other people in my craft. So I don't, we're going to do maybe like a special day for selling, but um, posting tutorials would be great. So Tyra Lily says, we have a free art supply depot here where people donate excess, excess craft supplies. Oh, that's a great idea. You also look on Kiji for people who are doing renovations. I don't know what that, I don't know Kiji. I don't know that, but you know what? There is a scrap exchange local to me. I never thought about going over there and looking for it. And actually I'm going to be in that town tomorrow. So maybe I'll stop at the scrap exchange and see what I can find. Because that's the same thing. People donate it and then they use the money to fund um, nonprofit stuff. So, yeah. Great idea. I bet I could find really good magazines there, too, maybe. Michaela's World uses um, PC Petrifier to glaze. Do you put anything over the PC Petrifier? Like, um, a lot of people do polycrylic, like PC Petrifier and then polycrylic. Do you do anything over it or just the PC Petrifier? Because when I tried it, it wasn't very shiny. But I was trying it mostly on cardstock. Well, actually, you can see, here's this one. So this, this one that I did was um, dipped, and it was PC Petrifier. I have to cover the whole camera to get it to focus. It's PC Petrifier with um, polycrylic over it. Come on, focus. And there are... Um, I use magazine beads for my ends there. So if this would focus, you could see it better. Come on. There we go. Um, so you can see it's pretty shiny. All right, so I'm almost done and then we'll compare these coats and see which one looks best or if there's any difference at all. Because sometimes I wonder if it's just our imaginations that one works better than the other. Because we like it. We'll find out. Oh, the um, the name is Paper Bead Fanatics. The name of the Facebook group. Paper Bead Fanatics. Okay. So, here, I'm going to turn this sideways so we can see it better. So here we go. So this was diamond glaze over here. These ones up here in the front were um, the Mod Podge and the ones over here were the triple thick. So let's look at, let's look at the darker and I wanna see, so this is triple thick. Oh, that's still wet so I'm gonna hold that. This is diamond glaze and then this one is the, uh, let me get them on the screen. And again, I feel like, here, let me, so this is the diamond glaze. I'm gonna hold these up higher to the screen so that we can see, that'll focus and we can see them better. These almost look blue on this, on my, um, on here. So in terms of the color, I mean, they're actually purple, but they look very blue on the camera for some reason. I noticed that before happening before with this color. Come on, focus. Focus for me. So I got a, um, a, very, a micro camera recently to do my tutorials with because of this trouble I'm having with this camera focusing. So this last tutorial I used the micro camera. All right, so this might be the closest I can get it right now. I'm not seeing any real difference in color. Like I don't see that one of these made the colors more vibrant than the other. 
it all looks exactly the same to me up close here. The purples all look the same. If I had to say it, I would almost say this Mod Podge may have made this dark purple one look a little bit darker, but that, you know, it could just be the light playing tricks on me. But I don't see much difference in color, and I also, I'm not seeing much difference in shine either. Although I do feel like the triple thick and the Mod Podge did fill in the ridges a little bit better than the Diamond Glaze. I feel like I can see my ridges better on the Diamond Glaze ones than on the other two. And that doesn't surprise me because they were so much thicker just putting them on. So let's try, let's go ahead and do a second coat and let's see what, what our difference is. I'm going to put these three to the side so that we can um, remember. So this one was the triple thick, the middle is the Mod Podge, and this is the Diamond Glaze. All right, so I've got those set to the side right here, one coat. Now we're going to do some with two coats and um, see what that comparison looks like because it can change significantly. Okay, so it's like a Craigslist. Okay. Interesting, interesting. I'll have to try it out. Okay, so let's dry off our brush. One thing I've learned, if this hasn't happened to you yet, or if you're new to brushing, absolutely 100% it is critical that after you rinse out your brush like this, you dry it really, really well. Because occasionally, I won't get enough of the water out of my brush, and even though I dip it in the glaze, the water will soak into my paper and kind of ruin the bead. So make sure you dry your, which common sense, right? You would think, but um, make sure you dry really well. <laughs> so Michaela coats with the Mod Podge first. All right, this is coat two of Diamond Glaze. And then you do the PC One layer of Mod Podge, three layers of PC Petrifier. So, I, okay, I'm glad you said that, Michaela, that when you try to do the um, PC Petrifier alone, the paper, like, absorbed it. See, that's kind of what I noticed with these ones that I did. I feel like the Petrifier almost, I don't know how to put it. It, like, it sort of puffed out the paper, maybe. It doesn't really look puffed out, but I don't know. It, it kind of changed the texture of the paper it felt like and it made it kind of rough so I wasn't um super thrilled I wasn't super thrilled with that and I wondered if it's because I was using cardstock more than magazine paper so that was kind of the next thing I'm gonna try but then you know with these magazine beads it, it really didn't do that because I had I did have these magazine beads in there so I'm kind of wondering if you need the PC petrifier with cardstock like maybe cardstock, because it's harder than magazine, maybe you really don't need the petrifier with the cardstock, is my theory that I want to test. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's, it's just a hypothesis. But it also seemed to me like, um, Okay, that was diamond glaze, so, oops, let me get that the other way so it dries better. Let me rinse off and try the triple thick. I also wondered if coating it with Mod Podge first would stop it from hardening, but you're saying it does work, so that's good to know. Okay. So this was my... This is my triple thick, and that's in the middle here. So we'll do coat two. Ooh, see, it's so much thicker. And it, the second coat goes on so much faster with brushing. So don't use Petrifier with construction paper. Does it destroy it? I'm 
not not strong enough to withstand the petrifier. All right, there's the second coat of triple deck. It changed the color, really. That doesn't surprise me because it's so porous. That does make sense. But it's always worth trying it, right? Because you never know what you're going to come up with. They look like Easter eggs. Some were dark and the rest were the regular color. You know, that has happened to me with a couple of um, other things too. And I've found out that it is, it is like you said, it's the paper. Because I had, um, we use this one for the uh, Mod Podge. Um, what was it? I had a really pretty blue color. Oh, it happened with um, embossing powder. But it was just only with a particular paper. I um wherever the glue got you know when you roll it you get a little extra glue and you just kind of rub it off um, wherever that glue landed on the outside it made it another color like it couldn't penetrate past the glue which could be a good look if you're doing it on purpose but not so much if it's by accident because you kind of have to plan where the glue goes if you're going to do that on purpose All right, so we'll give this a second to dry because it's the second coat. It's going to take a little bit longer to dry, and then we'll kind of compare. Oops, got to turn it over. <laughs> Captain, because they look kind of cool. I have some like that. <laughs> uh. All right, so we'll just wait just a minute for that. And I can tell you guys, do you want to see, since you're here live, I always like to do special stuff. So I got, so I don't know, okay, let me back up. So I have stencils, right, paper bead stencils. And um, I was making them myself here, and it just got, the demand got to be a little too much. They were kind of slow for me to make. So I decided to outsource and I got my samples from my manufacturer today and I'm super excited. Here's one. Now they're pretty much the same one that I was making here, um, but she has better machinery and we widened the um, grooves a little bit and we also widened the length of all of the stencils. So the slim Eurobead stencil used to be skinnier than this. So it's a little bit harder to um, this is the Slim Eurobit. It used to be a little skinnier than this um, and closer together. So we widened it out. So all the stencils now are the same three and a half inches wide. There's the triangle stencil. You can already see my marks all over them. There's the wide Eurobead and there's the Slim Eurobead. So I'm super excited. I'm waiting on her to tell me um, once I approve these tonight exactly how long. I think I'll have, probably have them in, in stock in about two weeks. So I did open up back ordering on the website. If you've been waiting for stencils and you want to go ahead and um, get your order in, you can. I think that I will have them to ship out the first week of, um, of August, but I am waiting on her to, to confirm that. So um, if you are interested in doing that, also if you order anything else along with your stencil, I will go ahead and ship out anything else you order and then I will ship the stencil for free when they come in. So just so you're aware, if you do order those on the website, they're no longer out of stock, but they will take a couple of weeks. So FYI on that. Let's see how these are going. Oh yeah, they're almost dry. We'll give them just another second. Let's see, Michaela, do you always paint your glaze on? See, yeah, and that's, I think we talked about that a little bit before you popped on. So there's a big debate, right, about which is faster, is glazing or dipping faster. And 
I'm going to actually try to time this because I'm new to dipping. So I want to I want to do it a few times and make sure that I know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to time it how much time I'm actually spending doing the dipping versus how much time I'm spending glazing the same amount of beads. Because I have a theory that it's actually about the same amount of time. It's just how you use your time is a little different. But for me, I'm usually trying to get a tutorial out, so I can't wait to dip. I need to glaze them and use them on the same day. So that's mainly why I brush, because I'm just in a hurry. And, you know, these dry so fast. But I don't have time to wait for the dipping um, process to happen. So let's give these another minute. Oh yeah, they're almost there. Do a video for for the two, like comparing the two. Like real time, that would be interesting. Huh, okay, I'm gonna think about that, how to do that, that might be interesting. It would be better if I could get a friend to come over and have them dip and me brush at the same time. But then I think dipping has to, I think dipping takes longer for them to dry, so that may not work. Yeah, I'll, fi I'll see, I'll see. I'm not going to promise, but I'll, I'll see if I can figure out how to do that. That would be neat. I'll definitely, I'm definitely going to do a dipping video by itself once I kind of nail down my process, but um, we'll see. All right, so... Diamond glaze over here, one coat, two coats. This is the Mod Podge, one coat, two coats. This is the, um, sure I'm on camera here. And then this is the um, triple thick, I cannot think of the name. Okay, so again, you're not gonna be able to get as close of a view in this camera really need to figure out how to get my micro camera working along with this camera at the same time. Um, I don't really see any real difference. So I would still say that the diamond glaze is showing the ridges more than the other two. Definitely. So it's going to take more coats of diamond glaze to get those ridges filled in, if that's your goal. I would say in terms of shine, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning on the triple thick. Let me turn this one around so it's facing the same way so I can compare. Hmm. No, I think it was just because they were facing the other way. No, I think they're all pretty comparable on shine. If I look at the dark purple on each one, I think they're pretty comparable on that. I don't know. Maybe the diamond glaze. Let's put them next to each other, this, the, the two coats. I think the other two may win. Oops, there's the two coats. No, I think I don't think there's any discernible difference in shine now that they're next to each other. I wish you guys could see this better. It's so much more fun if you could. Oh, wait. Oh, we almost had a focus. Let me do this. Okay, diamond glaze. working on it. If anybody has a suggestion for a better camera that focuses up close, let me know. I've, my one that focuses up close doesn't focus far away, so I need one that does both. That's not, that can hook to the computer. All right, so that, Come on, ah, there we go. So there you go. So you've got diamond glaze all the way to the left. 
you've got Mod Podge in the middle and Triple Thick on the right. I don't see any real discernible difference. Michaela, you comment all you want. That's why we're here. I appreciate it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you see any real difference in here now that, it, now that it's focused? What are your thoughts? Yeah. I don't see any real difference. And, and on the camera now that it's focused, I mean, you guys are pretty much seeing what I'm seeing. So it looks clear to me. So our verdict is, does it matter what you use? Huh. Well, I'm going to do more tests on these, not tonight, but with um, when I do my glazing series. Your bead trees. Bev, that's awesome. I'm going to think of them as bead trees forever now. <laughs> I love that. Um, when I do the finale to the glaze series, I'm actually going to like smash beads with a hammer and like, you know, do kind of a myth busters on them to try and see like what's the hardest, what stands up the most, etc., etc. Dip them in water, all that good stuff. So we will, um, we will see if there is a benefit to using one over the other. Yeah, they're all pretty shiny. Well, I don't know. I don't think there is a clear winner here in terms of shine. I will say, so the first two coats, I still stand by that the um, Triple Thick and the Mod Podge did a better job of filling in the ridges on the first coat. But on the second coat, I don't necessarily think there was much difference. I think that the Diamond Glaze caught up so I'm going to go ahead and second coat all these ones. So that's good to know um, that once you get to a second coat, you're pretty much the same no matter what. So you like them when you um, can't feel the ridges. You don't mind if you can see them, but you don't want to feel them. How many coats do you do to get them like that to where you can see them but you can't feel the ridges I've done um, five coats seems to do a pretty good job of making them disappear with diamond glaze but it depends those were pretty big beads that I did I don't usually do that many and those were pretty big beads and these ones right here I bet I could I bet three might even do it two of each will do it for the most part yeah sometimes that super shiny glossy look is awesome I'm going to go ahead and do a few more while we're talking. Yeah, the paper makes a huge difference, I've found. There are some papers that you cannot emboss on. It just does not, it just absorbs all the embossing when it melts. These are hard to get the ridges inside. I'm probably going to have to do those separately. So what kind of projects are you guys working on? I want to know that. I saw um, Julie on Monday showed me a huge paper bead ornament she was working on. It was adorable. I'm going to post it on the Facebook page for her. 
It's really pretty. What are you guys' favorite projects? Because I tend to do, so I've done a lot of jewelry tutorials, and then I've tried to branch out and do some other types of tutorials, but they do not get as much traction in terms of like views and comments and stuff. They don't get as much as the jewelry tutorials. So it kind of tells me that most people like to do jewelry versus like the flip-flops or, you know, other things. Because I was trying to think of some other applications for paper beads. But if that's not what people are mostly interested in, I can stick with jewelry. You've done some earrings. Earrings are good. Kathy asked if I make my own rollers. Yes, I make the rollers here. My husband and I actually make every one of them um, here at our studio in the house. And then we sell them at paperbeadrollers.com. And they are the ones that look like this with the little ridges. So, yep, these are all handmade by us. And I've started using a slightly darker stain as well. I don't know. It just looks nicer, I think. It's not much darker. It'll still match if you've already got some and you buy some more. It, it won't be totally off, but um, they may be a little bit darker than normal. Gina! Hi, Gina! Your roller is on its way. I don't know if you got your shipping. I put a little something extra in your box too. <laughs> Hopefully it will be there tomorrow, I think. I'll have to look at the, the tracking. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. We like them. We started making these rollers. I actually didn't intend to sell them, but we started making them because I have arthritis in my hand which has really been acting up lately. I don't know what it is, but um, I think I strained, I think I strained my hand doing those stencils is the problem. I'm not kidding. That's part of why I decided to outsource them because um, it was just getting too much. And um, so that's why we, I made the bead rollers. I was trying to do it on, you know, toothpicks and skewers and I made all kinds of crazy contraptions. And then we came up with this roller that we have which has kind of the thicker handle and the ridges to help you grip so you don't have to hold so hard. And uh, yeah, that's the whole reason we did it. Oh, Bev is making a paperclip dangles for TNs. The paperclip is covered in paper and then make the dangles with paper beads. Ooh, neat. That is cool. You need to post us a picture of that in the Facebook group. Yay. Paper bead fanatics. Go join. It's my new Facebook group. If you just joined and you didn't hear me talk about it earlier, I decided after my live on Monday, there were some things I was going to, I wanted to go back and tell you guys that I thought of about the 110 cardstock. And I'm like, you know what? I think it, I was, I had thought about doing a Facebook group before and I just kind of hesitated because moderating a Facebook group can be difficult. It can be time consuming, but I was like, you know what? I need a place where I can go and tell you guys stuff that's not on a video necessarily. So I decided to do it. So, paper bead fanatics. Very excited about it. It'll be a lot of fun, I think. All right, so I'm using up my diamond glaze here, but I'm gonna flip over to the other three and use up what I have here. I'm stingy with my glaze, I have found. I don't like to waste it. If there's extra left in the tray, I will literally pour it back into the bottle. That's how stingy I am. All right, Michaela makes keychains, earrings, and bracelets, and trying to get into rings. Rings would be fun. I've never done a ring. I was looking. There was a really cute tutorial I saw on a wire-wrapped ring that use tiny beads and I was thinking about using some of my micro beads to do a, a ring like that. It was like, kind of like a, a braided, it was braided wire with the beads in the middle. 
which I think is fairly common, but I think that would be pretty with paper beads. I was also thinking of doing some hair um, hair accessories. I got these things at Hobby Lobby the other day that are kind of like, they're not really bobby pins, but it's sort of like a bobby pin with a flat piece on the top. So you can sort of make like a hair decoration. So I'm trying to decide what to do with that. That would be fun though. Small memory wire and rings to make a ring um, and beads to make a ring. Yes. We should all do rings and share what we decide to do. That would be fun. Hey, maybe in the Facebook group we could do like a challenge for the month or something and be like, okay, this month it's rings. Everybody come up with a ring. That could be fun. We can do all kinds of things with the group. What other kinds of stuff do you guys like to make besides your traditional necklace earrings? Anybody ever done like um, a headband? I find myself wanting to put some on clothes, but then I think I would never be able to wash it because I don't really don't think no matter how much glaze you put on, it would hold up to the washing machine. It would have to be like a removable piece that you could put on your clothes and then take off to wash, right? Paper beads on the metal bookmark blanks. <gasps> Ooh, Bev, I never thought of that either. That's a good idea. I've done keychains. I've done flower keychains with paper beads. I think I have a tutorial on that one. That was the first project I ever did with paper beads, actually. Well, no. I actually think, no, that's not true. I'm lying. I think I did. I might have done one or two necklaces first, but I wasn't real thrilled with them. And then I think I did the flower keychains. Copper wire for rings, that might work. You probably need a much thin, a much thinner wire, I would think. But I don't wear many rings. I'm not a ring person necessarily. I just wear my wedding ring, but they bother me. Brace, honestly, I have to take my a lot of bracelets off. I love wearing bracelets, but then I work at the computer and I have to take them off they bang on the edge and the edge of my computer my laptop is metal or um magnetic and so the if i wear a bracelet that has any metal which they all have metal clasps pretty much um it sticks to the laptop edge it's hilarious well it's not so hilarious at the time i get frustrated with it but it's actually pretty funny Next time I buy a laptop, I need to remember not to get one that has a magnet in the edge of it by the keyboard. Bev, you give your stuff away. Yeah, I, I like giving it away too. It's fun. I have some. I just started selling finished pieces on the website, but I'm um, donating the profits to charity for all that. So I just feel like it's the right thing to do. And I don't make tons, although I'm thinking of doing a, lo there's a local harvest festival that we have in, cause I live in a pretty small town, but we have a local harvest festival, but like 10,000 some people come. And I was thinking about getting a booth and selling paper bead rollers and then getting, doing a bunch of jewelry. I've also recently been crocheting. I find it very soothing so I was thinking of maybe doing some crochet blankets and selling them there as well. We'll see how that goes. Seems like fun. I don't do a lot of craft shows because I find that um, you generally don't make a ton of money. Like it's a lot of time and it's fun to talk to people and I like that part of it. But I'd rather do a class to talk to people. 
because doing the shows is just so much work. Oh, that one is not very tight. Um, the face, the Facebook group is um, Paper Bead Fanatics. I just made it like a couple hours ago. So Paper Bead Fanatics. And you'll recognize the image when it comes up. It's got all, a lot of the stuff from my tutorials on it. And it's got paperbeadrollers.com on the header image. Who, does anybody here sell their jewelry? That's, I would be interested to know, or who, or would you like to sell your jewelry? If you, if you could, would you like to start a business with paper beads? Yeah, crocheting is good, right? My grandmother taught me to crochet when I was in the third grade. And I, she lived in this um, high rise apartment complex for um, seniors and she had a balcony and I, she wouldn't let me, she wouldn't show me anything except the chain until I mastered the chain, right? So I did a chain of red yarn and it went out the living room and over the balcony and down to the person below her. And I don't know what they thought. I'm sure they saw it. I could hear their TV. They had their door open. <laughs> I will never forget that day. That was the best ever. And my grandma passed away not long after that, so... That is a great memory. So maybe selling next year. That's a good goal. I got a lot of these to get through, you guys. So these beads are for a collaboration with Seam Stressed. I don't know if you've seen any of my videos with Seam Stressed. She is um, nanny. She lives in Germany, and she is hilarious. So she does videos that are kind of like, they're funny. They're craft videos, but they're also entertainment videos. Like she does, she doesn't hide anything. She just, she does all kinds of, um, funny stuff with it like the one the first video I ever saw of hers she did a Bob Ross painting on a sheet like literally followed his um, TV show to do the painting and then made a dress from the sheet it was hilarious so this is going to be a collaboration with her in August, I believe. We keep kind of pushing it back, honestly, but. And I probably won't use these dark ones because I realize she doesn't have, I need to have lighter colors. So probably the pinks and the off-whites you will see in that video. And look, I'm getting a little bit of um, dried glaze up here at the top of my brush, so I better clean it out. So that's something that did not doesn't normally happen with diamond glaze. I mean, it does if you go for too long, but um, this is the triple thick, and it definitely is drying up in the brush faster than the diamond glaze does. Bev, you crochet, you knit, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't crochet anything for a long time, and I just started back. I don't know what hit me. I was in the I was at one of the craft stores, and I saw some yarn on sale, and I was like, you know, I think I'm just gonna give it a shot, and I did. And now I've made I made blankets for my mom. I made a blanket for my dad. They're not very good, but mom and dad don't care. <laughs> they they're just happy that I made it. At least that's what they tell me. <laughs> they're like all uneven on the edges. <laughs> And then um, I'm making one for my best friend, Anne, who I'm hopefully going to be able to give to her tomorrow if I can get it all done. I'll have to work on it after this, though. Let's see. We're coming up on an hour, so I think we're probably going to wrap it up here soon. 
And is there anybody have any more questions for me or anything I can help you with while we're still on for the next couple minutes? Yeah, this is getting really dried up. You're making a blanket for your daughter's boyfriend for Christmas. Aw, that's so sweet. I hope he appreciates it. Seems stressed? Yeah, let me type her. I don't have the link to her YouTube channel. Um, although it is, if you look back on some of my other um, videos, I do have a couple collaborations with her. But her name is Seem Stressed. So you can find her. And I will, um, I can post it on the description after we get off here. I'll go look up her actual channel link. I, I adore her. Her name is Nanny. Totally adore her. I think she's the most hilarious person in the world. She has a dog named Sushi. And she made a um, sushi costume for Sushi the dog. <laughs> she's just this one, things like that. He's been using her blanket. <laughs> That's funny. See, that just means that he has good taste, right? Because he's dating your daughter and he loves the blanket you made her. I call that a win. <laughs> How did I get into making paper beads? So, um, so I was at a shop in downtown Raleigh that was a it's like a little boutique that a friend of mine owns and she had paper bead necklaces they were very expensive um and i just can't afford to spend i actually have bought one from her um since then so so she doesn't feel bad right <laughs> because i have bought one from her but um she doesn't make them she imports them and, um, it, you know, it was gorgeous. And I was like, you know, I really, I really want a necklace like that. But it was just way too expensive for me at the time. So I decided to make it. Because, you know, we all do that, right? We go to the craft shows and we see something we like. And we're like, oh, I could make that. The problem is we don't normally make it. Like, we're standing at the craft show and we're debating buying it. And we're like, yeah, but I could make it. And so you don't want to spend money on something that you could make. But the truth is we don't often actually make it. We go home and then we just never make it. So I've learned that when I'm at the craft show and I see something and I have that thought like, oh, I could make that. Then I have followed up with, but I won't. And so I end up buying it. But anyway, in this case I did, um, I decided to try to do paper beads and I just instantly fell in love with it. It was just so much fun. And then, you know, within, it was probably within a week or so that we developed our own paper bead roller. Um, after trying, you know, a couple different things. Like I tried splitting bamboo skewers and taping them with washi tape. And I mean, I tried all kinds of stuff, but just with my arthritis, it was impossible to um, do that for very long. So that's how I got into paper beading. I was cheap. I wanted to um, make a necklace <laughs> for myself. And then I just fell in love. But I have been a serial crafter all my life. Um, I, when I was younger, I did, um, for a long time, I did these boxes. I would buy, the, like, the little wooden boxes from the craft store, and I would weave ribbon over them. And I would create, like, little treasure chests and um, blanket boxes, and I used to go to craft shows and sell them. That I was really big on that for a while. I think I still have a couple of those around, actually. Um, I sew... I was on, in a kick of making my own clothes, maybe, oh gosh, that was probably 15 years ago. And I was also, I did a um, Renaissance Festival. Have you guys ever been to a Renaissance Festival? So I used to sing, and I, when I first moved to this area, I joined the Renaissance Festival, and I had to make my own costume. So I sewed my own costume with, like, boning and the bodice and all that kinds of stuff. But I was, it wasn't fancy. I was not a... Um, I was not a rich um, medieval girl. I was like a peasant, which was good because I don't think I have the skills to make one of those fancy dresses. <laughs> I had peasant type skills. <laughs> yeah, making your own jewelry is, I think that's probably why a lot of people get into it. They just want to make their own. And now I love it. I love that when I have an outfit, I can make whatever kind of jewelry 
I want to make to go with it instead of having to go search. Like I used to buy a lot of jewelry at Kohl's, but now when I go to Kohl's, a lot of times I'll look at it for ideas <laughs> and then I'll come home and make something with paper beads that looks like it. So I spend a lot less money because, you know, making paper bead jewelry, the, the most expensive part about it is the findings and the um, wire and stuff. That's the part that could break you. So, and I'm working on a good solution for that stuff too, by the way. Finding some good sources to have some of that stuff to sell. Um, and for myself, of course. So, I will let you know more about that as it gets closer. Um, yeah. So, what do you guys think? Are we, um... Are we done for the night? I think maybe we are. Well, we shall see. I think we did good. I think we determined that there's not a whole lot of difference, at least in the look between these three, but we will see when we do some experimenting how they uh, hold up to the water test and the smash test and all that good stuff and the stickiness test. So I'm gonna take the Mod Podge ones out tomorrow in the heat. And I will post in my Facebook group um, whether they got sticky or not. So watch for that tomorrow. Uh, the Facebook group is Paper Bead Fanatics. So oh, here, let me switch over, switch cameras so you can actually see me. Oh, hey. Um, so the Facebook group is Paper Bead Fanatics. So if you want to go join, that would be awesome. So we could chat whenever we want. We don't have to wait for a live video to do it. And I will let you know if the Mod Podge uh, get sticky and this was dimensional magic is the type that I used so we'll see what that does I don't know we'll see all right guys thanks for hanging out with me I appreciate it I missed you while I was gone so it's so nice to be able to just hop on here and chat and do a little crafting so thanks for coming oh one more thing um winner I have a winner to pick um and I did it just before this live I need to announce it so we had a survey, um, hold on, let me pull up the winner. We had a survey, and I don't think she's on this live, um, but the people who filled out the survey had the opportunity to possibly win a gift card to my shop, and um, the winner of that is Jill's Creations. So Jill's Creations, I will be emailing you your gift certificate to the shop. Thanks to everybody who participated in the survey for me. It gave me lots of valuable information about um, having some online classes, live classes where you can actually chat with me with your voice, not just with your fingers on the keyboard. So hopefully we'll be doing that soon. So I'll see you over in Paper Bead Fanatics. I will see you on the YouTube channel and you guys have a wonderful night. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.